Hi guys, welcome to another tutorial on Xero. My name is Samuel Burmeister and I'm the owner here at Tall Books. Today we're going to cover setting up an employee in Xero. And before you attempt to do that, make sure you have set up your payroll settings first. I've already recorded a video on this, so if you missed that, make sure you start there to begin with. Those settings are found here under the settings menu and then payroll settings. Okay, so let's jump in. Once you've set up your employees, you will see a screen like this. You'll find this under the payroll tab here and then employees. Basically, you then get your general list of employees and the payroll calendar that you have assigned to them. So we set up the calendars that you get to choose from under payroll settings originally. You'll then see them here along with any groups that you've assigned certain employees to and when their next um, payment date is. So just to give you a quick look, click into one of these employees and you can see we have all the different tabs along the top and I'm going to take you through those now so that you can understand what's included in an employee. This is exactly the same as what you'd get when you click new employee and so we're going to use one with a bit of detail to go through today. So when setting up James, the first thing we start at here is the left tab details. So put in their name, the date of birth, you can put in their gender and job title if you'd like, and you can even upload a photo of the employee. Then we've got the contact information here down the bottom and make sure you fill out this top section. And if you use this as your main CRM or employee database, enter in their emergency details as well. Once that's done, make sure you hit save and then we can move on to the next screen. You'll get the green bar along the top. So then we've got employment. So in the employment tab, we simply go through the start date of the employee, which is important for the first pay run. You choose the calendar you'd like to assign them to. So this is important if you have different areas of the business or perhaps some casuals and some on salary, make sure you set up a separate calendar for each so that they can run on different pay cycles. If the calendar is not there to choose from, you'll need to do so under the payroll settings, which once again is up here under settings, payroll settings, and create a new calendar. You can then come back into the employee and assign them to that calendar. You can put them in an employee group, um, holiday group. If you select the holiday group, so this um, employee is in Victoria, it means the system will automatically take into account any Victorian holidays when you um, have leave put through for this employee. So that's really handy, make sure you use that. Ordinary earnings rate, this is pretty straightforward most of the time. It's generally ordinary hours. Um, I would make sure you check this with your bookkeeper or accountant or your HR depending and make sure you've selected the correct option. Ordinary hours will work for anyone on a casual, full-time or part-time rate, as you can set the hourly rate in one of the following tabs we're gonna go through. Below that, we have whether they're authorized to approve leave and timesheets. So using Zero timesheets and also Zero's payroll app, you can um, have employees who have these permissions. So you might have a payroll officer, or a manager who looks after this for your casuals, for example, or part-time and full-time staff. Below that, we have our super memberships. So once you've set up the superannuation funds available under payroll settings, you'll be able to come here and click to add a super membership. You can then select the fund and enter in the employee's employee number. Once again, we'll save that and move along to the next tab. So next up, we've got an important tab. We've got taxes, everyone's favorite. So let's have a look. In the taxes area, you will define basically the award details and put in the TFN information. If you get this wrong, the employee will most likely be taxed too much or too little. So make sure this is filled in correctly. So you put in their TFN. If they haven't already given you the TFN, you're awaiting the form for the declaration, you can choose TFN pending. Uh, make sure you get that in there so they don't get taxed at the wrong rate and choose their employment basis. 
So you can see here, we've got a few options. And then we've got our most common, so Australian resident for tax purposes and the tax free threshold. So make sure you've ticked all relevant areas here. Now you can file the declaration through zero as well, but if that's separate or you're waiting, you can just click save only and move on to the next tab. So next up we have leave. This is obviously applicable to anyone on part-time or full-time employment um, or permanent casual if they're in a special setup where they accrue leave. So coming into the leave tab, you can see their balances once they've been set up. But before any of that, you would have to assign the leave type. So you have a button here that says assign default leave type. And you need to click that and it will give them annual leave and personal carers leave. So based on how many hours they're working, etc., it will let you set up the annual and personal carers leave and then just accrue that for them. You can see here for this employee, once leave requests are then put through, it'll show as a history and show you the leave period and what it was for. So it's really handy if you ever want to go into the leave tab in an employee to see their history. Okay. Uh, one other thing while we're here, you can click new leave requests through this area too. Um, if you want to specifically set it up for that employee for future leave. Okay. So the bank accounts tab is next, very straightforward, put in their bank account details. And what you can do with this is upload an ABA file to your bank downloaded from zero, which then allows you to pay all of your employees in one go using the bank. If that's the case, you have lots of employees and that's how you want to do this. Make sure you've set up their bank details or the ABA file will not work. So once again, save and move on. Pay slips, you're not going to have anything in this tab when you're first setting up the employee. But after you've got them set up and you've had a few pay runs, you will see the history here. Next tab along, we have the pay template. This is the last and most important tab really that we'll look at today. So you add their earnings rate. In most cases, you'd have ordinary hours as their primary rate, which basically is where you define how many hours they work per week. If it's casual, you can have zero because it changes every week. Or if it's full-time or part-time, you'll enter in their defined hours per week, and then you can enter in the hourly rate, or in this case, because of the employee's type, we enter in their salary. This then defines the ordinary hours on the pay slip each period for you. You can add multiple earnings lines as well. This can be done on the pay slip itself when you're processing the pay run. However, if you want to set up any specific earning lines, make sure you do it here. So you click that and you can choose the different types of earning rates. So we've got ordinary hours, overtime, you'll see some of the defaults are set up for you. And it also includes allowances. You've also then got your deductions. So if they have any deductions that are applicable that need to show on their pay run, make sure you add a deduction line. The main deduction types, once again, will be set up here for you. Otherwise, you can um, create your own, but you shouldn't need to. Lastly, you've got the super fund details here at the bottom. So we chose the super fund previously on another tab. However, here we define the percentage that is contributed. So 9.5% would be typical now um, at the time of this recording. Um, you can also add a reimbursement line down the bottom as well. So if they need to be reimbursed for travel, mobile phone, allowances, things like that, you can put that down the bottom and then hit save and move on. Make sure if the pay run isn't giving you options that you need to put in for the employee, like overtime, et cetera, that you've come back to the pay template and added them in for that employee and you'll be good to go from there. The last two tabs aren't too important. You've got opening balances. Basically, if they've carried over from another software or package, um, or maybe they've started partway through the period on zero, enter in the opening balances as at the date that you started this employee, and it will continue to accrue from that point, as you can see here. And then finally, we've got notes. Just leave any information that you'd like about the employee. And that's how you set up an employee.